Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we continue our quest to get that promotion to League One. I think it's still a bit early in the season, but two wins today would put us pretty much a big step there. Today, we have two away games, though, as we get close to uh, going to our revamped ground. More about that. Welcome to Bottom to the Top. Hello and welcome to episode 49 of From the Bottom to the Top. My name's Mark and on today's episode we have two away games for you. First of all against Accrington in League 2 and then against Oldham Athletic in League 2. Not a million miles apart, um, Accrington and Oldham, so we'll be able to stay in a hotel overnight, I guess. Um, that's if we don't travel back along the M62. One of the two. Um, it might be cheaper to run backwards and forwards, I guess. Uh, we'll see. Uh, bearing in mind there's a week apart, so I think that's probably uh, best. We'll uh, go to Accrington and then uh, come all the way back, uh, M66, M62, and then a trip down to Oldham along the M62 again. Um, since you were last with us, uh, last time out, a bit of a deplorable um, episode, really. It uh, completed a three-game dismal run, actually, where we only picked up one point from a possible nine points. Um a 1-0 loss at Tranmere, uh, or at home to Tranmere, more to the point. Uh, it was two home games on the trot that we lost. And uh, and then a 1-1 draw against Crawley Town. Jordan Roberts scoring, but he's uh, been injured. Was he injured in that game? I think he might have been, actually. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm not sure whether he was injured in that game or not, but he's uh, he's been injured since um, and uh, is uh, going to be out for a little while. Uh, but since then, we have um, managed to turn things around a little bit. We've uh, we've put that uh, little wobble aside, and um, we managed a three-one win at home to uh, Milton Keynes Dons. Um, Josh Dixon after three minutes, Will Russ after sixty-two, Josh Shepherd after sixty-four, and a uh, happy uh, who was very happy five minutes into injury time got one right on the death. Um, otherwise, it would have been a 3-0 win. 12 shots, 5 on target, 1.91. Uh, they did very well. They had 12 shots, 7 on target, a 1.53. So just XG-wise, just a little bit short. And we had the, the bulk of the possession. But they uh, definitely gave us a run for our money. Um, and I suppose you could say that the scoreline did flatter us a little bit. But uh, all said and done, uh, it's a win. And, uh, you know, even when we haven't played particularly well, a win is a win. Uh, then a home match against Walsall. Uh, this one um, was uh, Will Russ uh, doing his usual. Should have been three up, actually, after 34 minutes. Well, not actually not three up because they got one back after 24, but it should have been 3-1. But uh, Will Russ missing a penalty, and didn't he miss a penalty? Um, whammed it straight over the top. I think it was a... Um, uh, it was Gareth Southgate-type... Uh, I've just realised on the wrong camera. I do apologise. Um, yeah, it was like a Gareth Southgate one straight up over the uh, over the crossbar. I don't know what the heck he was thinking. Mind you, he had only just come back from injury. Uh, but he scored on eight minutes and 13 minutes um, to give us two goal leads. As I say, uh, Littler, uh, Litter, um, after 24 minutes, getting a consolation, what turned about out to be a consolation for Warsaw. But we hung on in there and uh, managed to get that win and uh, really were good money for it. Uh, 20 shots, eight of which were on target. And as you'll see, XG was 4.18. So we really should have rammed that home against Walsall, um, but didn't. Um, they had seven shots, three on target, 0.55. And again, as you'll see, we had the bulk of the possession. And uh, as you'll see, XG never really in any doubt, but uh, we gave away that consolation goal, um, which, uh, which smarted a little bit. Uh, but hopefully we're going to take that momentum into two away games now on today's episode. Um, and then two home games, as you'll see. So it seems to be going in a in a spat of home away, two homes, two aways, and so on and so forth. But it seems to be how it goes. I think it's more to do with uh, these games that were postponed around about December, January time and then got pushed down um, because of the waterlogged pitch, which hopefully we won't get when we go back to the Citadel. We can hope. 
Right, so to, as I say, uh, first game up today is Accrington Stanley. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at the table just to see how we are. We are 19 points clear of Bradford in second, 20 points clear of Wrexham in third, and uh, 21 points clear of Colchester in fourth, which is the interesting bit because obviously all these three get an automatic promotion, which is what we're looking for. So 21 points clear of that lot. Um, and uh, if we go right the way down to the uh, to the nitty gritty, um, we are a further 52. Um, I think that is something like 27 points. Yeah, 27 points clear of Grimsby in that eighth place. So 27 points clear of um, not going to do anything, whether it be playoffs or otherwise. But uh, I'll be very disappointed we end up in the playoffs um, being so far clear of Colchester at this stage of the game. Right. Um, that's the important bit out of the way for that. Uh, we did say that uh, we were, um, when we would go back to our new ground, or new ground, our, our proper ground, our own uh, ground, and if we go to facilities, uh, it says here, regular stadium due to move back into a 5,550 capacity citadel after planning um, planned expansion and the works adding 1750 seats uh, should be completed on the 4th of the 3rd 2025 which means as we are going to come back um for the Wrexham Wrexham because they are uh, tucked in sort of close behind us anyway uh Wrexham and Barnet in the next episode so um with that in mind um we will i think barnet will be our first game at our new stadium uh, or not our new stadium but our uh, revamped stadium so we'll uh, we'll be keeping one eye out for that as we get there right without any more to do how have we got on against accrington we've only played them once before a yeah, league 2 game um, back in september it was a 3-0 win on that occasion um goals from connor mcbride who scored two and will russ who scored one so uh, hoping for something similar today. Let's see if we can do it. And this is the team that will face Accrington Stanley in this uh, Skybet League 2 game. Friar in goal, Robinson, Jones, Nelson and Doherty, our backline. Kavanagh, Willock and Coleman are our uh, midfield. Brunt in front of them because Dixon is still injured. McBride has come back from injury but can only play 60 minutes and Will Russ um, in his second or third game since coming back also from injury in uh, alongside McBride as a target forward. Uh, Bonet, uh, Fernandez, Harlock, Nolan, Godsmart, Ford, Shepard and Cannon are our bench for today. Uh, a couple of other notables is Nelson is one match. Uh, one yellow card away from a two-match suspension, having picked up nine yellow cards. Um, Doherty, um, he has also he was he's also uh, one yellow card away from a two-match ban as well, having picked up nine yellow cards. So Lewis Doherty and Nelson, what we could do with doing is only one of them going out at a time. So uh, if you can manage that, boys. Um, if both of them pick up yellow cards, then we, we've got to uh, cover both of this. Not that that's a problem, because Godsmart Ford can go in there. Fernandez can go into Central, but it's uh, it's probably better if both of those aren't out at the same time. Would be uh, preferable, then, uh, shall we say. Right, let's see how we can get on, then, against Accrington Stanley at the Wham Stadium. Yeah, I was trying to think of a, a, a pun line there. Something like, um, wake me up before you go-go. So we're underway here at the Wham Stadium and uh, we're playing in our green and white shirts as usual and uh, Accrington Stanley playing in a red with a white uh, shoulders to the kit. And we'll be keeping my on, eye on Bradford City and Wrexham today try and close the gap i think bradford must be in the lead already there's uh the lead is down to 17 points which suggests that they've taken the lead wherever they are fryer comes out and picks this one up jones we're half an hour in not a lot happened in between robinson's back to jones jones robinson robinson to kavanagh 
Havana looking for Coleman. He finds him. Doherty. A slow build up. Nelson. Nelson goes all the way back to Fryer. Fryer finds Jones. And we build again. Kavanagh. Kavanagh to Brunt. McBride. Russ. Br McBride. Coleman. Coleman has a shot from distance and it's uh, a little bit over the top. But uh, that's the first highlight we've seen. And uh, early doors, not a great deal happening. Um, just going to check on. I can see it. Wrexham are one up against Sutton United. A penalty after 13 minutes. And Bradford City are three. Yes, three goals up against Newport County. So that is why the deficit is cut to 17 points. And 40 minutes gone here. Not a lot happening. So just checking to see the formation. They're playing sort of five at the back. Three, a flat back three, and then two wide players. Two in midfield, one uh, behind the two attackers. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, causing us a few problems, as it has done a little bit of time throughout this season. So we need to look, see if we can find an inroad into this. Uh, eight shots, two on target, 0. 0.65 against their four shots, none on target. Um, and we have had 55% of the possession. So we're in it, but we just need to uh, improve a little bit in the second half and... Uh, I've only got uh, an, about another 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes of Connor McBride. And you're back for the second half. Neil is on for Little. And uh, they have a corner. Thomas with the corner. Swung in and it's uh, hit the woodwork. And it's a goal kick. Right. We're going to just pause that for a minute. Just check. Yeah. Into his weaker foot. Check all the things are set up. Never, oh, no, it's never trigger press on that one. Right, 52 minutes gone. We're going to have to be looking for a way in here. Fryer to Nelson. Nelson fires that one forward, but he's given the ball away, and it was a bit of a trepid thing and they're in here and uh that's a save by fryer well, luckily he managed to divert it for a corner thomas with the corner then swings in Ooh, and uh the defender's head missed it and uh i think uh the player behind him the aki player behind him was a bit surprised it actually came through to him and um as a consequence um, didn't actually get anything on it properly. Right, let's have a look and see what we need to do here. Colchester, Wrexham must be losing. Colchester have taken over Wrexham's spot in third place. Bradford City must still be winning. In fact, they are by three goals to nil. Wrexham score was a bit lower, but we can't see it now. It's disappeared. It's a bug or or what? Right. Um, we just need to decide what we're going to do here tactically to try and win this. Um, McBride, theoretically, is tired. He should be coming off by now, but uh, he's not. Will Russ isn't having a very good game up there at all, is he? Um, <laughs> change him to a pressing forward. Um, I think we're going to change formation, actually. We're going to change to this formation. Right out on that side. Willock isn't the best placed player for that, but he's not having too bad a game. Zach Brunt isn't playing too bad. It's Will Russ that's uh, not been playing well, but I don't really want to take him off. Um, but it feels really mean to take... Um, Right, let's take Zach Brunt off and we will bring on, have we got midfield, right, left, central? We haven't got a midfield central, have we, on the bench? Yes, we have Jared Harlock, 
Let's bring Harlock on then in that one. <clears throat> and Matty Willock. We need to swap him out really for either Shepherd or Nolan. Nolan, he's on a 6.68 um, average rating. Shepard is on a 6.82, so I think that answers the question. So it's going to be Matty Willock who's going to come off for Shepard on that side. And we've still got Nolan. We can do a swap around if we need to take McBride off. Um, the only thing is... He should really be an inverted winger on attack. And McBride will be an inside forward also on attack. Let's do that. Right. Team talk. Point finger. Go out and make a difference. Both of them are motivated. Let's see if we can get the goal that we need to see us through. head down past our normal time and now we can see Connor McBride is tired Jack Nolan on for him and do we swap Shepard and Nolan over mm, hasn't really done anything Shepard is better as an inverted winger on that side or is he better as a winger actually on that side let's stick him as a winger Make a lot of odds for Nolan. Let's stick him as an inverted uh, inside forward. Right. Final change then. And what we also might do in a second is go attacking. And they have made another substitution. I think it's anything immediate that we've got to worry about. In fact, they've made two substitutions. Larson, I think we'll, we'll put him on a weaker. I would just put both of them on weaker foots. And then we've got them covered. Right. Get back underway. And we're going to go attacking just to see if we can sneak this. Might Bite us in the bottom, of course. It's looking very much like a nil-nil draw as we get uh, close to full time. And it's going to be, I think, there's nothing doing. And Will Russ hasn't had any attacking foray there at all today. A nil-nil draw then. And uh, 13 shots, four on target, 0.89, nothing spectacular. Uh, they had nine shots, one on target. Um, and we have 55% of the possession. So not a good day at the office, but it's not a loss. That's the main thing. Uh, what has happened in the Bradford game? And how does it leave us in the table? Well, as it turns out, Bradford were pe pegged back in that second half uh, by Newport County. Chadwick getting two goals, 74 and 77. They must have been a bit worried after being 3-0 uh, up um, as time rolled on. Um but they did win that game, so cuts the uh, deficit at the top to 17 points now, 17 points behind us with, I reckon, 12 games to play. Um, so 36 points available to both teams. Wrexham losing by three goals to two to Sutton United. Uh, they were three goals up after 57 minutes. Um, sorry, Wrexham were two up after 40 minutes. And then uh, Sutton just came back on a roll, 43 minutes, two minutes into injury time, and then again after half time. And uh, it looks like Wrexham had no answer to that. So Colchester take up their third place after beating Morecambe by six goals to one. So they've had a really good day um, and obviously punched a bit of a hole in the goal difference as well, which would uh, make uh, a huge difference as it is. Right, not a good day. We need to uh, pick up three points against Oldham Athletic who are languishing down in 21st. So there's no absolutely no reason if we can't achieve that, then we are in trouble. Um, hold out for a draw. 
um, Accrington Stanley. I would have said it was probably the other way around, to be fair. Um, very disappointing in some respects. Right, uh, seven days down to the next one then, so we'll cycle through and we will come back for that game against Oldham Athletic in this League 2 game. Uh, Oldham Athletic would beat 2-0 in the uh, reverse fixture earlier in the season, back in early November. Uh, Ronnie Nelson, uh, I guess from a corner, after 36 minutes, and Will Russ after 88 minutes on that occasion. And hopefully uh, we will uh, do something similar this time, um, but also uh, hopefully with Connor McBride and Will Russ back into fighting form. And here is the team that will face Oldham Athletic in this uh, Skybet uh, League 2, the second match of the episode. A few changes from the last game. Fryer is in goal. Doherty moves out to the left as uh, Robinson is uh, is tired and is, uh, is on the bench uh, for this one. Nelson, Coleman and Limbiksa comes in on the right-hand side. Kavanagh, Harlock and Willock in midfield. Dixon is back from injury. Uh, only just back from injury, can only do 45 minutes, so we're going to have a double change, probably about 60 minutes-ish, because uh, uh, despite this, hopefully, they will, uh, assuming they don't pick any more uh, injuries up, of course, they should get through to about the 60-minute uh, mark. Uh, Dixon uh, McBride is up front. He's there going to be the target forward this time. Uh, Russ is the other striker on uh, the right-hand side. And then we have Boney, Fernandez, Robinson, Nolan, Shepard, Brunt and Jones all on the bench. As I say, there will be a bit of tweaking, probably go to our um, our other formation, that sort of formation, uh, as we get into the game a little bit. Hopefully, we'll be uh, a couple of goals to the good by then, or at least fingers crossed. And we're on the way here at to Boundary Park. Old Athletic, interestingly, playing in a sort of rusty colour. I'm not quite sure whether what that is specifically this season. Um, and they are underway and uh, doing reasonably well. We're not doing much at all at the moment. Have one shot. It's not been on target. Half hour's gone for the second game in a row. No highlights. So, uh, Going to try and fire the team up. Which has pissed everybody off. Somewhat. And we have a corner. Harlock swings it in. It's uh, cleared by the defence and they're going to get to it. No, he's not. Lembeeks is going to beat him to it. Harlock, Willock. Willock back to Lembeeks. Lembeeks crosses it. Kavanagh, Dixon, Harlock, Dixon, Kavanagh. Harlock, McBride has come back for it. Harlock, Kavanagh, through to McBride. McBride, nice ball play there to Doherty. Kavanagh looking for a way through. Harlock, Coleman, Coleman to Willock. Willock crosses it for Kavanagh. Kavanagh is on the ball and puts it away. His first goal since he's been with us. And uh, the Oldham players have their arms out almost... Uh, like they're complaining for something or other. Um, never, don't know whether they thought he was offside or not. We'll see in a moment. Kavanagh threw on the ball and uh, it was a lovely finish in the end. And it stands. They have a corner. Harriet with the corner. It's headed. It's ping-ponged around. And they've got an equalise almost straight away. Ah. Uh. and I think Fryer made the initial save but only managed to put it into the path of Ruth and uh, there it was on over the top Fryer out of his area Coleman as we come forward we seem to have a run of highlights right now Willock, Russ Russ goes out wide to Lembiksa Lembiksa cuts it back Willock into the path of Russ Russ, it's, uh, the angle was too, uh, too thing, but he's passed it back to Josh Dixon, and Josh Dixon gets his seventh of the season. Three quick goals from no highlights. 
We've had a run of highlights and three quick goals. Nice play this. Nice interplay. Willock through to Russ, who just, I think it took it away from him a little bit, but uh, had the foresight to turn around. And Dixon was uh, not marked. Played it to Dixon, and Dixon deposited it in the back of the net. Half time comes. And after that foray of activity, Alan Kavanagh after 41, Ruth after 43, and then Josh Dixon on 46. Um, we do go into the halftime two goals to one. Ten shots, four on target. Uh, 0.97. They've had eight shots, three on target. So pretty much the same. Uh, 0.89. It's all pretty even, Stevens. Apart from the possession, we've had the bulk of the possession to date. Um, we need to sort of gear up a little bit in the second half if we can. And we're back underway at Boundary Park. No changes at half time that I'm aware of. Uh, Bradford, I think, must be losing because we've gone to 20 points clear of them now, which is good news. An increase in that end of things. And the 60 minute mark comes and goes. And I think we need in to do some changes. We've seen Josh Dixon come up on the uh, ball there and Conor McBride as well. Right. Change of formation then. It's that time, and we're going to do that. Um, going to be insides forward on support. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to reload. Position two, it's that one, isn't it? Yes. Tactics for the man are already sister. You want? Uh, no. Load. That one, version two, loaded up. Right, that's better. That's the uh, formation we want. Right, we need to do a bit of jiggery dunkery here. Zach Brunt can come on there. He's tired, so he will probably come off naturally. I don't want to make all three changes at the moment, though. McBride will have to come off. He is tired. And Jack Nolan is going to come on for him. I think we'll leave it at that for the moment. Carlock can play out on the right. And uh, we'll see what changes we need to make thereafter. Right. Point finger. That'll make me proud. Both are motivated. Let's see what we can do. Bradford losing 1-0 to Leighton Orient as it currently stands. And Old Ham Athletic have a goal kick. And it's a bit of a wayward. And no, 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 no. He's chipped him and it's 2-2. Two -two. Ah. Route one and Fryer wasn't equal to it, was he? Does beg the question, do we get Boney involved? Uh, right, we've got to come back again then. Down to 80 minutes. Move on to a more defensive formation now. Obviously to try and stop us getting through. And, uh, Carlock can drop into Kamina's role. And Ryan Kamina coming off for... Jacob Shepard. I am tempted to go to this version of it. Make sure we're loaded up. 
correctly. And, uh, that didn't work, did it? Change those over. That's better. And then what we will do is we're also going to go attacking. Really want to try and get this. win if we can we come back is it going to be enough though this is the question doesn't look like it looks like a they have a free kick which is a bit of a worry it's gone over the top thankfully goal kick and we go into injury time not a lot doing we have tired legs on the pitch. And I think what we do is we go back to positive. I don't want to drop that point if we can. Because Bradford are losing 3-0. So they have definitely lost their match. And uh, I think it would be wise, if nothing else, just to open that gap up on a penalty. The uh, Oldham team have done far better than us today. Bearing in mind they're down in 21st. This isn't the sort of result we should be seeing. We should be uh, well out in advance here. And it's very disappointing. It's going to be a 2-2 draw. One point from the episode again. 15 shots, 5 on target. 1.41, 60% of the possession virtually. Against their 24 shots, 9 on target. They really had us on the ropes. Um... And I think Joe Fryer had a good game. So uh, probably, if it hadn't been for Joe Fryer, we would have probably lost that match. So uh, not impressed in the slightest. Uh, we're starting to lose our way a little bit. Tired legs and all the rest of it. And bearing in mind, we've had a, a, a week's gap between games. I need, to, uh, I need to have a really good look into this. Let's have a look and see how the table looks after this round of matches. Well, the gap at the top is still 17 points. The only difference is we are now 17 points clear of Colchester and not uh, Bradford City. 18 points clear of Bradford City and 21 points clear of Wrexham. So 21 points clear of uh, the uh, playoffs, if you like. And I think that pretty much guarantees us automatic promotion. It would be nice to go up as champions, uh, but we are faltering of late. And uh, we need to sort of uh, pick ourselves up and hit the ground running again and have uh, three or four games where we can win on the trot. And I think we will then pretty much put it to bed. Um, other scores today, Bradford losing 3-0 to Leighton Orient. They wouldn't didn't want to do that, really. Um, Colchester beating um, Solihull Moors by a goal to nil, which pushes them up into second. And Wrexham, a 2-2 draw against Bristol Rovers, uh, which uh, keeps them down into fourth place. So that's how it's all turned out. We've still got that gap at the top, which is all fine and dandy. But uh, I'd just like to have had it really been great to have got to March and put it to bed, to be honest. Um, never mind. Never mind. Um, Right, we will do all the necessary. Uh, we will come back in the next episode. So this episode has produced two two points. I did say one point, didn't I? Two points, actually. So we haven't lost. We're on an unbeaten run, but we've uh, drawn three of our last five, um, which is, is disappointing. All of those games away from home, and I, I hasten to add, um, we do have two home games coming up. So uh, hopefully both those home games, we can uh, we can win. Oh, dear. Right, we're going to do Grimsby and Port Vale offline. We're coming back for Wrexham, who uh, were in, well, now in fourth place, and they were in third or what have you, um, and Barnet, who are rock bottom at the moment. Um, and potentially that could be our first game back at the Citadel. So uh, lots to see on the next episode, but a bit disappointing on this particular one. Even so, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, don't forget to leave me that big thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification button. That will keep you up to date with all that's left in this particular series and uh, all the episodes that are left in this series, should I say. And of course, uh, uh, it, 
it'll keep you up to date what's happening when uh, FM23 comes out and uh, who we are going to manage during the beta version. It's going to come out very, very shortly. I promise you just doing the work, the background work on it right now. New episodes are from the bottom to the top, currently released every Monday and Thursday at 4.15 p.m. And if you want to keep up to date what's happening on this channel and more, you need to follow me on Twitter at Just Offside 2. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you for the next episode. It'll be episode 50. It's out on Thursday. Until then, it's a very goodbye. <laughs>